Do you think Tug this reminded me about the so there's another special angle that we talked about, the Brewster angle. Right. That it comes so it comes in if you have a polarized ray and it comes in at some angle, then the angle between the reflected and refracted is ninety, mm -hmm. and the polarization something else. Does it change? Something else is polarization. Okay. Should that be the last thing we talked about? Did you want to finish with that? Or? Yeah. If you like? Yeah. Okay. I guess I feel uneasy if I left okay. knowing that I don't really. Now remember, we just went over a case where there's no transmittal. Oh, so put it another way. Remember that usually, anytime light hits a surface, usually when light hits a surface, there's both transmittal and reflection. Yeah. But we just went through a case where there's total reflection and no transmittal. Now the Brewster angle is a case where there's only transmittal and no reflection. And both of them happen at certain angles. So we just figured out the critical angle where there's only total internal reflection and no transmittal. And then the Brewster angle is the opposite case, where there's only uh, transmittal and no reflection. So let's go through the basic ideas for that. So it's kind of a step-by-step -step logical argument. So let's say we have some light that's coming into this air-glass interface. All right, um, now we know that uh, the light consists of fluctuating electric and magnetic fields. So what direction are the electric fields fluctuating in? Well, one thing we know for sure is they're not fluctuating in this direction. Yeah. They're fluctuating perpendicular, so we could draw them like this. We could draw the electric fields fluctuating like this. perpendicular to the propagation of the light. And again, as usual, to simplify, we won't draw the magnetic fields, although we could. Yeah. Now, if this is unpolarized light, there would actually be, the electric field could be pointing in many directions, as long as it's perpendicular. So for example, there could also be electric fields going into and out of the page. Okay, so uh, we could have a whole series of electric fields that are perpendicular to this beam of light. All right, so then we get to the new medium and the light bends. And now the electric fields are fluctuating like this. Now you can see the electric field has to have a different orientation because we know that refraction bends the propagation direction. Since the propagation direction is bent, the electric fields have to bend too to be perpendicular to it. Now remember that actually, where are these electric field oscillations coming from? Well, remember that one thing they can come from is from uh, oscillating uh, molecular dipoles. We talked about that last time, or oscillating, uh, oscillating charges inside the substance, oscillating dipoles inside the substance. So we talked last time about how if we have a dipole that's oscillating up and down like this, it's going to generate electromagnetic waves. Uh, one thing that we talked about that was important is the electromagnetic waves will spread out from here. The one direction they won't spread out, spread out from, though, is the direction of oscillation. Remember we saw that there will be no EM waves that are spreading out in the same as the direction of oscillation. So if this uh, dipole is oscillating up and down, the EM waves can spread out to the sides, but there will be no EM waves up and down. We never really quite explained why that is, but we're just going to accept that. Um, when a dipole is oscillating, the EM waves um, propagate to the sides, but they don't propagate directly in the direction of oscillation. So that was all around it, but just not. That's right. Around. There's a picture in the book oh, that shows that. All over the whole yeah. Okay. Um, so what this really means here is that we have uh, dipoles that are oscillating in this direction. Um, no. 
We don't. Um, but there's isolating dipoles that are giving us these electric fields over here. OK, and we also know there's going to be a reflected ray. There's also going to be a reflected ray. And here, the electric fields must be oscillating, again, perpendicular to the ray. The direction of oscillation of the field is always perpendicular to the ray. So here's the incoming light, here's the reflected light, and here's the transmitted light. Now remember that there's also other electric fields not drawn. For example, there could also be electric fields here oscillating into and out of the board. That would also be perpendicular to this ray. And down here, there's also an electric field oscillating into and out of the board. And here, there's also electric fields oscillating into and out of the board, as long as it's not in the direction of movement. OK, now, where is this reflected ray coming from? Well, here's a way we can talk about where this is coming from. We talked about this last time. This electromagnetic wave comes in. Uh, we know it's oscillating at a certain frequency. And then it hits the molecules in the glass. It hits the molecules in the glass. And since this elect incoming electric field is oscillating, that makes the dipoles in the glass oscillate. The incoming light makes the dipoles in the glass oscillate. It's not that that actual same wave is bouncing off. It's like that wave goes into the material, and then, that, then the material's dipoles oscillate and shoot off another one. That's the way we're thinking of it. That's right. That's exactly the way we're thinking of it. That, that, that's, uh, yeah, that's exactly the way you want to describe it. So what we should think of is that it's a step-by-step -step process. First, the wave um, hits the glass. That causes the dipoles in the glass to oscillate as the same frequency as the wave. And then secondarily, the oscillation of the dipoles in the glass, you can think of that as generating a secondary wave that reflects off in this direction. Because we know that oscillating dipoles generate electromagnetic waves. We talked last time that oscillating dipoles. So it helps to think of the glass here as a middleman. We think of the glass as a middleman. It receives the oscillations from the incoming electric fields. That causes the glass to oscillate, which creates a new electric field that can bounce off in this direction. Now, which way are the dipoles in the glass oscillating? Well, this is the way they're oscillating. Whichever way the dipole is oscillating, that's the direction of oscillation of the electric field. So if the dipoles are oscillating up and down, they're creating an electric field that oscillates up and down. We haven't quite proved that, but it's kind of intuitive that if the uh, dipole is oscillating up and down, it'll cause an electric field that's oscillating up and down. And then remember that makes the wave propagate perpendicular to that. And the magnetic field does the same thing as electric field does. Uh, let's see. We're not. Uh, we're not really not going to get into that. But we know that the magnetic field um, is also caused by the oscillating dipole. Um, but it's, it would have a more complicated relationship that it won't pay off for us to get into right now. Uh, we can really understand this just with the electric field. But it's true. If you draw the electric field, you know the magnetic field must be oscillating perpendicular to it. But that will just confuse us at this point. OK, so let's focus on the electric field. Um, because there's a simpler relationship between the electric field and the dipole than the magnetic field. And you can see why. Remember that um, when we talked about magnetism, we saw that magnetic fields were caused by moving charges, right? But we saw that the magnetic fields were always kind of perpendicular to the movement, yeah. not in the direction. So that's a more complicated relationship. It's much simpler to focus on the electric field. So if, uh, if the dipole is oscillating up and down, the electric field is also oscillating up and down. So which way are the dipoles oscillating in the glass? Well, they're oscillating northeast, southwest, like I have written here. They're oscillating in this direction. So this is the direction that the dipole is oscillating. But now, this shows that there's a certain angle at which we cannot have reflected light. We can now show that there must be some angle in which we don't have reflected light. And here's why. If this angle is theta 1, the law of reflection says that this angle must also be theta 1. 